Welcome to Get Sleepy, where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. As always, I'm your host, Thomas. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Heather will be reading our story this evening, where we'll follow along with Jenny and Chris as they escape for a day to a cozy hotel in a historic beach town. There, the only item on the agenda is to unwind. Let's get ready for our story with a moment of relaxation. Begin with a few deep breaths in through the nose and gently out through the nose or mouth. I'm not going to ask you to breathe at a particular pace. You can just allow your natural pattern to continue. But just see if you can consciously notice the breath. Notice the details of it. Where do you feel the presence of oxygen in your body? Through the nostrils or the throat? In and out of your diaphragm? And how does it make you feel? Every breath maintains all the functions of your body a synergy of our natural environment and the vessel of the body. The breath is your eternal rhythm, and when you heighten your awareness of it, you naturally become more centered and more calm and peaceful. Even if your mind continues to wonder, which it is free to do, just know that your eternal rhythm is still there. And you can just gently recenter your focus on the breath whenever you like. Now that you're nice and settled, there is another eternal rhythm that you can visualize tonight. Imagine that you are all by yourself on a beautiful beach. Hear the calming sounds of waves crashing on the shore. See the rolling water which reaches all the way to the horizon and the clear blue sky above. Feel the sand between your toes. Taste the salty air on your tongue. This is where our story begins. Jenny woke slowly to the distant cries of seagulls and the feeling of the warm, early morning sun resting on her face. Stretching luxuriously in bed, she turned over to face the ceiling and slowly remembered that she was on vacation. Picking up her watch on the small side table, she could see it was still early. She had slept peacefully all night, and now she felt well-rested 
and ready to enjoy the lazy day ahead. The rest of the small hotel still seemed to be asleep. She would have thought herself the first person awake if it hadn't been for the sound of a door being lightly latched in the hallway, followed by tiptoeing steps going down the stairs. There was another early bird here, trying to be kind and thoughtful. It made her smile. This was the perfect peaceful start to her day. Sitting up, she pulled aside the fluffy white comforter and swung her feet to the wide planks of the wooden floor. She could feel their glossy, painted boards under her toes, worn smooth by over a hundred years of use. Jenny stood up and stretched, peering out the window. Her room overlooked the front of the charming hotel. Across the street, there was a row of traditional older homes with lovely large porches. Some of them had flags snapping in the breeze. A couple of them had bicycles outside. Jenny spied one of the comfortable old-fashioned bikes called cruisers that were often seen on the beach. These bikes always seemed to come in happy colors, like yellow and pink. As she watched out the window, Jenny could see surfers walking away from the shore with their large, colorful boards in tow. They had no doubt arrived at first light and had already been enjoying the waves for hours. Dripping wet, they also looked happy and relaxed as they returned to their cars. She imagined that they must be looking forward to a hearty breakfast. Turning and peering through the side of the window, Jenny could see the front of the hotel with its bay windows and festive flower boxes overflowing with petunias. The porch was arranged comfortably with rocking chairs and small tables for resting a cup of coffee or a glass of lemonade. One guest was sitting in blissful solitude, browsing the newspaper with a steaming cup of coffee next to him. She made a mental note to find some time to relax on the porch later. Jenny and her friend Chris had planned to meet for breakfast when the hotel restaurant opened. Chris was staying in another snug little room right down the hall. They had decided to do this beach getaway spontaneously, thinking it would be the perfect change of scenery. Now that she was here, Jenny could see this little enclave had been the ideal choice. It was such a sleepy place with just a hotel, a quiet neighborhood, and a roadside stand for snacks, coffees, and essentials. The hotel itself had stood there for a very long time, with the homes around it slowly appearing throughout the years. 
Since the busy city was only 20 minutes away, there had never been any need to add the bustle of shops and other conveniences here. The hotel offered handy amenities like umbrellas, chairs, and beach toys. Food was available at the restaurant, even for takeout on the beach. What else could a vacationer really want? The peace and quiet of this hidden spot was definitely worth the trade-off. Jenny opened her canvas weekend bag and pulled out the items she would need for the beach. She loved the fact that she'd be going down to breakfast in comfy beach wear. There was something so lovely about dressing purely for leisure. She couldn't wait to dig her toes into the warm sand. The weather forecast was absolutely perfect for a beach day. After brushing her teeth and tidying her hair, Jenny laid out her beach tote on the bed. She made sure she had her latest novel and her sunglasses, as well as lip balm and a water bottle. With everything she needed in tow, Jenny still had a few extra minutes before meeting Chris. She decided to head downstairs early and make a visit to the coffee station. She picked up her key with its diamond-shaped plastic keychain bearing her room number. Then she stepped out into the hallway and quietly locked her weathered white door. The painted white floors in the hallway were the same as the ones in her room. Stretching the length of the narrow corridor, they gave the space a clean, bright feeling. At either end of the hall was a staircase leading to the lower level. On the walls between the rooms, there were vintage prints that showed people from many years ago enjoying the beach in their old-fashioned bathing suits. One of the pictures was an antique illustration of a lobster. Jenny walked the long way down the hall to the stairs at the other end and descended to the lobby. The front desk was currently empty. There was a bell on the desk that you could ring if you needed anything right away. But since arriving, Jenny hadn't seen anyone use it. Nobody here was in a hurry. Stepping into the well-stocked coffee station, she chose a mug and filled it with a steaming dark brew from the dispenser. She took a tentative sip and nodded appreciatively as the strong flavor revealed itself. This hotel made good coffee. She only had a few minutes to wait before Chris would appear. Jenny pushed open the screen door and made her way into the spacious porch. The man who had been reading there earlier had gone. She had the whole place to herself. Sitting down on a wicker chair, she set her cup on a nearby table and leaned back gently. 
The weather was already balmy and pleasant, even at this early hour. A gentle breeze blew, catching tendrils of hair that had escaped from her ponytail. She felt like she could take a nap right here and stay all day. But she knew the beach was waiting for her. After a few minutes, the screen door opened and Chris stuck her head out on the porch. Good morning, she said. Are you ready for breakfast? The two women made their way to the hotel restaurant. The host greeted them both warmly. He led them out to the screened porch at the side of the hotel. Jenny and Chris were delighted to get a cozy table for two in a sunny corner spot. The server poured them each a glass of ice-cold water out of a charming carafe in the middle of the table. She took their orders and told them she'd be back soon. As they waited for their breakfast, the two women poured over a paper copy of the takeout menu. They knew they'd want to choose something to carry to the beach with them for lunch later. There were all kinds of delicious things, from cold sandwiches to boardwalk-style favorites like grilled cheese and hot dogs. Jenny decided to get a lobster roll with mayo, and Chris opted for a chicken salad sandwich. One thing Jenny always loved about beach days was how amazing her food tasted by the time lunch came around. There was something about lying on the sand that made everything taste better. She was looking forward to biting into that lobster roll after a few hours on the shore. While they were eating breakfast, a few other people were seated around them. A family sat at a larger table nearby. They talked happily about their beach adventures from the day before. Other tables looked like they might be couples on a getaway or old friends having a weekend trip together. The mood was relaxed and happy. Almost everyone was wearing shorts, sun hats, or flip-flops. When they finished their bagels, fresh squeezed orange juice and fruit, Jenny and Chris pushed back from their table and gathered their beach totes. They were ready to walk the short distance to the water and find the perfect place to set up for the day. Returning through the lobby to the front porch, they took advantage of the free beach equipment the hotel had to offer. Chris selected an umbrella and Jenny chose two beach chairs that could be carried over her shoulder on a strap. They walked down the front steps and joined the growing number of people ambling in the direction of the surf. It was such a quiet and peaceful neighborhood. There was no sidewalk to speak of. People were simply coming out from houses along the street and making a five-minute walk to the sand, carrying everything they needed. It was all so easy. Jenny thought to herself 
how amazing it was to be actually staying so close to the water. Their location made all the difference. Within minutes, the two friends had arrived at the steps down to the sand, which stretched an inviting golden strip ahead of them. Luckily, it was low tide. The beach was at its most generous size for now. Children who were arriving with their parents dropped their sand toys and raced each other down to the water's edge. The parents chuckled to themselves as they slowly found spots that would be safe from the incoming tide, at least until early afternoon. Jenny and Chris took their cues from the appearance of the sand and did the same. They placed their umbrella where it was dry and soft rather than damp and smooth. This was an area that the tide had not covered recently. Since it was just the two of them, they were traveling light. Jenny and Chris were soon set up with their umbrella and their two chairs facing the gently glittering surf. Leaning back into her seat, Jenny heaved a huge sigh and closed her eyes. The sound of the waves drifted soothingly across the beach to where they sat, and seagulls could be heard crying faintly here and there. A light breeze blew, bringing the invigorating smell and the elusive taste of salt. She wanted to freeze time. This was perfection. For a few minutes, the two friends were quiet, taking time to fully appreciate this wonderful place. After that, They fell into easy conversation for a while, and then both Jenny and Chris pulled out their novels and started reading. There was a mutual agreement that this was a time to get lost in a book. Around them, other beachgoers settled into their own activities. A family nearby began building an elaborate sandcastle. Their small children made countless trips to and from the surf to bring water into a bucket to fill the moat. It didn't matter to them that the sand was absorbing the water. Just fetching the water was wonderful entertainment. A young couple on the beach was playing frisbee. A dog jumped happily between them, trying to catch the red soaring disc. Occasionally, the frisbee would fly wide, and another person on the beach would cheerfully pick it up and hand it back. Most of them also asked if they could pet the dog who wanted to make friends with every single beachgoer. There was no boardwalk here. There were no planes flying overhead with advertising banners. There wasn't any car traffic. This beach truly was a sweet little secret from the world. In this lazy manner, time just slipped silently by. Jenny wasn't sure how long she read, but she realized at some point 
that the sun was high in the sky and she had drifted off to sleep, dropping her book in her lap. Stirring herself, she looked over at Chris, who eyed her with a smile over the top of her own book. Jenny didn't know exactly what time it was, but realized she was ready for that lobster roll she'd brought. They opened up the bag and unwrapped their lunch with delight, sticking cold bottles of water next to them in the sand and tearing open their bags of potato chips with a satisfying pop. The tide had come in a bit since they'd sat down. Children who had been energetic a few hours ago were now drifting to the shade of their parents' little tents and umbrellas to claim their midday snacks. Jenny noticed a mother nearby, whose baby was clearly asleep, lying across her lap. The sea air was both refreshing and sleep-inducing. The lobster roll and the chicken salad sandwich were soon eaten. Both were excellent, Jenny and Chris agreed. Having dusted a few crumbs of chips and bread off her lap, Jenny stood up and told Chris that she was going to go stick her toes in the water. Chris nodded with understanding. Sitting in the sun all this time was making the sparkling water look irresistible. Jenny wandered down to the waves and stood looking at her feet as the surf crept up the beach and covered her to her ankles. It was deliciously chilly, a perfect antidote to the sun she'd been soaking up for hours now. Reaching down, she splashed some of the frigid water on her shoulders and the back of her neck. She shielded her eyes from the sun and surveyed the activity in the water. A woman floated nearby on an inner tube, eating an ice cream sandwich. Now that is a great idea, Jenny thought with a grin. Jenny stood and observed the wet ground under her feet as the water washed in, paused for a few moments, and then sucked away again. There was some glittery gold substance mixed into the sand that you could only see when it was underwater. It was very pretty. Walking along the edge of the surf, she came to a rocky area that was filled with tide pools. Balancing her bare feet on the bumpy rocks, She peered into the trapped puddles of water and watched tiny hermit crabs scurrying about. There were children nearby on their knees, giving the creatures a closer look. One of them ran back toward his parents on the beach to report his exciting discovery to them. Looking up from the tide pools, Jenny could see Chris, who now seemed small and far away on the beach. She slowly worked her way back along the encroaching tide until she reached their umbrella and returned to her seat. Picking up her book again, Jenny noticed that Chris had dozed off and smiled to herself. Just this short amble along the shore had been enough to make her want to sit and relax again. As the afternoon wore on, time seemed to pause. Jenny looked up frequently from her book 
and became pleasantly lost in thought. She watched a man flying a colorful kite and observed the growth of the sandcastle fortress near her. Some of the children she'd seen running all day fell asleep in the shade near their parents. A few of the families around her began to slowly pack up, shaking sand from their buckets, filling in holes, and collapsing their colorful beach chairs. Thanks to the turning of the tide, the water was now getting much closer to where they were sitting. When Chris awoke from her nap, Jenny confessed that she was feeling a bit warm and that she was also hungry. Chris agreed that it might be a good time to return to the hotel, have a snack, and clean up for dinner. Packing up their belongings and the borrowed beach equipment, Jenny and Chris slipped on their flip-flops and slowly climbed the stone stairs behind them to get back to the street. It was a busy time of the afternoon up there. Not only were numerous beachgoers packing it in and heading away from the water, but there was all kinds of other activity popping up in the yards of the homes facing the street. At one sprawling home, a family was playing a good-natured game of croquet. Next door, a group of people were setting up an outdoor table for a meal, while children tumbled in and out of the house. Some of the kids looked like they'd already taken a bath and been dressed for dinner. Others were still in bathing suits and were probably waiting their turn. They remained gloriously sandy and ran roughshod through the yard, chasing each other with dripping popsicles in hand. Jenny and Chris soon arrived back at the hotel and gratefully unloaded their umbrella and chairs on the porch. After dusting them off, they carefully stacked the borrowed items where they'd found them earlier, leaving them nicely for the next guests who needed them. Entering the lobby, they were delighted to discover that they'd stumbled upon the afternoon coffee hour. Not only were there hot drinks and iced lemon water, but there were warm chocolate chip cookies laid out, each in its own paper sleeve. Jenny picked one that looked good and smiled as she pulled it out of the paper and took a bite. The cookie was soft and covered in large crystals of white sugar, and the semi-sweet chips were slightly melted. Dropping into two easy chairs in the lounge area, Jenny and Chris grinned widely as they ate their cookies in silence. These snacks would be the perfect bite to tide them over until their late dinner reservation in the restaurant. They watched people file in and out of the lobby for a while. Some greeted each other warmly, and others were there with questions for the desk attendant. After a bit, Chris suggested that she and Jenny part for a while to rest and clean up their rooms. They decided it would be a great idea to meet again at twilight and take a walk around the neighborhood before dinner. In single file, they climbed the old wooden staircase to the upper level. Once they were in the hall, 
they went their own separate ways, agreeing to see each other in the lobby soon. Jenny pulled out her room key with its plastic keychain and fitted it into the lock. It made a satisfying clunking noise and the door swung open. There was her room with sun pouring in the window and her soft bed piled high with white linens. She sighed with happiness. After cleaning up for dinner, Ginny curled up in the decadent orange velvet chair by the window. From her regal perch, she could see people strolling by on the sidewalk outside. The petunias in the window box bobbed cheerfully in the breeze. She saw the different groups of people streaming up the road as they headed home from their own late afternoon activities. A nap, a game, or a chat with friends. Leaning her head on the back of the chair, she breathed deeply in and out several times. She couldn't remember when she'd been so relaxed. Without realizing it, Jenny slipped into a light nap. She awoke to the fluttering of her white curtains in the setting sun. Looking at her watch, she could see she hadn't slept long. She was still on time to meet up with Chris. Rising and stretching her arms, she slowly circled the room, picking up her small purse and her key. Then she slipped quietly into the hallway, locking up just as Chris appeared a few doors down, doing the same thing. Together, they headed to the lobby. The coffee station was still there, but the cookies had been cleared away in preparation for the dinner hour. Peeking into the restaurant, Jenny could see the servers setting up the tables and seating the first few guests of the evening. She and Chris would be ready for a relaxing dinner after their walk. As they exited the swinging screen door to the porch, the sound of water glasses gently clinked behind them inside the hotel. Turning toward the beach, they were treated to a blazing pink and orange sunset. Lots of other people were out in their yards watching the gorgeous display in the sky. As they made their way down the street, they were intrigued to see what was going on at each home. The houses were charmingly unique. Each one was built in its own style, according to the wishes of the owner and the period in which it had been constructed. A humble cape with a slanted roof and charming shutters might sit next to a more contemporary home with huge glass windows. Then, next to that, they would see a very traditional farmhouse-style home with a large, gracious porch. Many of the houses had tables and outdoor furniture that showed the residents spent a lot of time eating al fresco. In one yard, they saw a woman relaxing with a little girl in a hammock. At this hour, with night falling and the houses lit from within, windows thrown wide, It was easy to see the occupants all enjoying time together in 
inside as well. People sipped drinks on couches, gathered around cheese board, and even played the piano. At one home, a pile of sand toys was drying in front of the garage, and a man was playing catch in the front garden with two small girls. The dogs pranced excitedly behind picket fences. What a great life for a dog, Jenny thought. She noticed that more and more people were appearing outside and setting up luminaries to line their driveway. They would place a white paper bag on the walk, fill it partway with sand, and sink a lit candle in the center. Some homes didn't have luminaries, but they had roped white lights around their trees and fences. Chris mentioned that she'd seen a flyer reminding everyone that today was called Night of White Lights and that this must be why all the homes were illuminated so festively. Jenny thought it was charming, and the street looked beautiful. Their walk eventually took them on a stretch that ran parallel to the beach. The tide had reached its height while they were resting at the hotel, and now it was on its way out again. People who appeared to have wandered away from their evening activities could be seen in pairs and small groups up and down the beach, admiring the moon or tossing toys for their dogs to catch. Jenny loved that most of them appeared to have wandered a block or two completely barefoot. Jenny and Chris soon arrived back at the hotel, marveling that they had finished their walk at just the right time. They re-entered the lobby and then waited patiently for the restaurant host to take them to their reserved table. The atmosphere inside the spacious dining room was lovely now, Votive candles flickered on every table, and the two screened porches on either side were filled with diners, leaning over their meals in quiet conversation. Jenny and Chris were seated at a snug table in a nook where they could feel the warm breezes drifting by from outside. Looking at their menus, they could hardly choose a favorite. There were dishes for every taste. Fresh seafood, pastas, wood-fired pizzas, and more. After much thought, Jenny decided on a seafood pasta, and Chris chose pizza. Both dishes were Perfect after a long day on the beach. Why was it, Jenny wondered, that a person got so hungry from just sitting in the sand? It was truly one of the mysteries of life. They followed up their dinner with a slice of cheesecake. Jenny took care to savor every bite slicing off small pieces with her fork and enjoying the rich creaminess of the dessert. Once the cheesecake was finished, they both had to admit they were truly ready to head upstairs to bed. The two friends were full, happy, and as relaxed as they could ever remember being Thanking the server and the host, 
They walked very slowly back into the lobby. The only person there at the moment was the nighttime desk attendant. She was clearing away all the coffee and preparing the drink station to start again in the morning. The woman turned and smiled at them. Did you have a good dinner? She asked. They both nodded, saying that it had been amazing. And it had. Jenny and Chris each helped themselves to a fresh glass of water from the drink station and then headed upstairs to their rooms. Parting ways on the landing, they wished each other good night. They would both reminisce about this marvelous day for a long time. Back in her room, Jenny sank gratefully into her big, soft bed. Looking appreciatively around her, she reflected on what a lovely place this was. Thanks to the balmy temperatures, the windows were still open and the occasional conversation or sound of a bicycle could be heard on the street below. Jenny propped herself up with a mound of white pillows and angled her book toward the golden pool of light coming from her bedside lamp. The silence in the room was absolute, as if it was a tiny cocoon drifting through the world of the seaside town outside. She had thought she might finish her novel, but her eyelids soon began to droop, and Jenny realized it was time to sleep. Putting her book aside for tomorrow, she laid her piles of pillows flat, reached over, and switched off the lamp. Turning on her side, she gazed sleepily at the slice of moonlight shining across the white painted floors in the dark. Everything here was golden and white, she thought. Now only half awake. The salty breeze fluttered her curtains once again. As she slipped into sweet dreams, Jenny heard the distant sounds of the surf breaking on the sand. Then she slept. Good night.